yeah. looking at right now. That's the prayer actually, they blocked the road now. We are like 10 minutes. You want to go to the right? Uh, no, it, it could be that you get stones on the car there or tear gas grenades, not a safe place to park. You guys have done this so many times, right? Do you know what to expect? Yeah. What are you expecting? Nothing today. Also, I believe in Murphy's Law. You guys are here, you want to see some action, you won't get any. Murphy's Law. It's predictable. It's so predictable. You know, you know the actions. You know the reactions. You have a you have a prayer tent in the midst of Silwan, where you would have. It's mostly the elder men having their Friday prayers on the streets. Once these uh, prayers are done, you have a bunch of, of younger men or children. Um, Usually looking where is the police, where the right police, and everyone start throwing, uh, th uh, start to throw stones. And then the police would react with uh, shooting tear gas back. Uh, that's, a, that's why it is a little bit like a stage fight. We are not in a intifada mode anymore. Okay, our coverage cannot be regarded as the intifada mode. Those days are not there anymore. Our infrastructure, our machine, if you want, is there with the same level of photographers, journalists. These days, especially, the situation for the past year is really calm. Well, of course, this, is, this is the thing they're doing for the first time. That they're just going around the neighborhood like this with banners and flags. It's, it's something I see for the first time during the Friday demos. So it might be something new. I don't know how it's picture-wise. Huh? Uh, no. Yeah, well, you can put. Yeah, it depend, depends on the police, if there's a police already or not. If there's no, yeah, there is. Yeah, it's time for a gas mask as well. Yeah, time for a gas mask. Gas mask. Two gas canisters and it's over. <laughs> that was fast. They only took a picture. Yeah. Right. Right. Because there's nothing interesting to shoot. Two boys throwing stones, that's not a picture, that's not news, that's not interesting. Let's continue upstairs. Basically, uh, these Friday demonstrations in at least one place in Israel, Palestine, are covered by. Every news agency is covering it every Friday at least some place. Let's say there's four papers in Israel. There is Idiot, Haaretz, Ma'ariv, uh, Jerusalem Post, and uh, AFP, AP, EPA. Oh, <laughs> we are <laughs> here as well, the Itartas. And you, you can see like all the media around are coming. But why? 
because uh, for the same reasons I cover it, it's part of this conflict. And even if you go there and take no pictures, you have to go there and just observe. It's something you don't see many other um, countries or many other areas of the world where, where there is a with, with an on, where, an, where an ongoing story is like performing itself every week, because the story become auto-referential. It keeps producing the same pictures. The problem is that there is a Palestinian state in the making. So we should not wait for the next stone throwing to find a story, but we should find different stories every day and then also keep covering the occasional stone throwing. I think he has tens of thousands of pictures of guys throwing stones. Really, I'm not joking. Yeah, yours every Friday. <laughs> every Friday, every single Friday. Every, I, looks the same, really. I, I mean, and it was once I told him, like, Ilya, what's the reason of going? It's the same picture all over. <sighs> and what does he say? You gotta be there to shoot it. I mean, if you're not gonna go around and just sit at home and wait for the moment, <laughs> it will never come. It's a ritual. It's a ritual, and it's, it's, there's two, two elements. One is the fact that you have to be sure that you are there in case something happens. Uh, sometimes we go back with a picture in the bag, or sometimes we go back with absolutely nothing. So this is one side. The other side is that this demonstration become, have become, and I can see it happening this every week, a sort of um, battling ground for young photographers. There's a lot of jumping into the frame. <laughs> There's a lot of pushing and shoving if you want. Yeah. It's kind of hard because there's a lot of people and it's kind of hard because there's no, no, no room most of the times when you shoot. There's no other place on planet where you have so many photographers on such a um, small patch of land. Yeah, there is a competition in a way of there's a lot of photographers. In Silwan, for example, and there's this policemen standing and like everybody forming a line basically blocking him so that in this way there yeah, yeah there is a competition there's a risk of working by proximity by imitation if you want because oh look this guy is taking that picture over and maybe that picture is worth taking so you're going to do it well let's put it this way this story has been covered from nearly each and every angle and gives the photographer an edge and a challenge, an added challenge, I would say, to try to find an interesting way in a different way to tell a story that has been covered for so long and so many times over. Sort of quest of uh, quest for the defining picture that tells in one frame the story of this ongoing conflict. Any protest that's going to be taking something with the uh, American government, Israeli government, or Syrian government, or whatever, this is the spot of their demo. They always come here, they shout, whatever they shout, they come with signs. That's, that's basically it. How are you? Good. Tell me, are these, where are the people which are in prison? In which they are, are they Palestinians from West Bank or Israeli Arabs? Israeli Arabs. Israeli Arabs. There's demos, so people who are going to this demo, they feel like they're doing something. And yeah, maybe comparing to other places, they're not doing, they're doing anything. We came here today just because we hear from different people that there's supposed to be a big demo comparing to its size. Well, it's kind of, kind of big. Most of the time it's like three, five people standing with a sign, so it is kind of big for this kind of event. Uh, well, I guess. I guess maybe. Well, I, I don't know. No, I don't know really. Why so many photographers here? 
Um, because I think many people dream of being a wall photographer and uh, Israel is a very accessible spot to uh, learn lessons in wall photography or conflict photography. However, I will not shoot myself in the foot by saying this, but uh, news gathering, it's busy pretty easy in this place. And it's fun, I mean, you, you dodge tear gas grenades, you run around a little bit. It's exciting, it's playing. <laughs> As you said before, this is not news. It becomes news when something different happens within the single demonstration. <laughs> it takes a different kind of attitude for a photographer to cover an economical aspect or a political aspect or a society or a lifestyle aspect. But this is extremely difficult to cover. You need a lot of knowledge, you need a lot of attention, and you also need a level of freedom to cover these kind of things. You cannot be relying on your daily fee if you want to do this, because nobody will pay attention to this kind of information. So you can't survive as a photographer. All these demos are also to, to show, to show something to the world. And how can you show it when you stand in a small neighborhood in the middle of nowhere? How are you going to show everybody if not the cameras? If AP, Reuters, EPA, AFP, Getty didn't cover something, it basically didn't happen. But it didn't happen in the news, it didn't happen in the paper, it didn't happen on the internet, it didn't happen on, on the TV. But in the actual place, it did. Hello, There's a joke among the Israeli photographers here. They, they call this, uh, they call crocodiles this, uh, the new photographers that you can see springing at every demonstration and they come in and every demonstration you see a new pair of lens and a new, a new kid with the, the camera running faster than you. Is there collusion? Well, there are possibly some level of collusions. Here's the posing kids. People tend to pose when they, they see uh, a lens directed at them. And that's uh, it's unfortunate because as a photographer, you always want to have like a natural moment. You don't want to have people posing for you. People are, get smarter and smarter and they know how much impact media can have. And they, um, they know that if there are a lot of journalists at the scene, that they get... Uh, and whatever kind of message they have, it, it, it ideally gets hurt. So yes, uh, the more journalists, journalists can alter uh, an event, absolutely. I believe, though, that there is a way for uh, people like me or people senior than me to distinguish between pictures that are genuine or ungenuine. It's not our business if a demonstration happens or not, we pay the photographers anyway. So if nothing happens, well, it's not of your concern. Nothing happened. Why want to come to Israel when it's been shot thousands of times? The story is never, is never over, and um, I wanted also to come here because I, 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 I like this, this religious aspect. I, I wanted to, to understand religion better. I wanted to see these people who come to pilgrimages to, to go to, to, to the charges where allegedly uh, uh, Jesus was buried. I wanted to see it with my own eyes. In order to, to understand this conflict, um, you have to understand the religions. 
there's no conflict. I mean, you know, there's a few kids throwing stones from time to time, but it's not, uh, compared to the Intifada, it's nothing. I don't even go cover that now. Is it overcovered? It's not for me to say. I mean, if, uh, if there wouldn't be a demand for so many pictures, I suppose there wouldn't be so many photographers here. So I reckon it's not overcovered. I'm waiting, you know, if there's really, really serious riots, then I'll go, but not for, you know, 10 kids throwing stones. Because if there weren't photographers there, they wouldn't be throwing stones. But you can say in a way it's maybe overcovered because the way journalists cover this place. They're making out of events something bigger than the events than the actual events are. I think there is no way out. We have to be there. Photographers have to be sent to these demonstrations because this demonstration would happen anyway. Most of the most of the guys there throw stones. They don't even want to have journalists there. So it would happen anyways, with or without us. So and then better with us because we can take pictures of it. <laughs> That's it? Yeah, yeah. Why not, you know? Huh?